Good morning and welcome to the mini confab for January 13th. Glad to have you with us today. Um, we have a couple of different things to share, but one, we will start with Catch Me at My Best. We have two winners. Uh, winner one is Susan Austin. She is a nurse in assisted living, relatively new with us. Uh, the story with Susan goes, I had visitors from out of state and he lost his phone, wallet, cash, cards, and ID. Susan found it and turned it into the front desk with everything intact. What an honest employee. You can be very proud of her. Susan Austin, thank you for doing that. Would hope that all of us would do that, but thank you, Susan. Number two is Carmela Gardner and dining. Many of you have gotten to know her in the last couple of months. Carmela, uh, the story goes, for quite a while, Carmela has been decorating the plant plated dish in the cafe, making flowers and designs from sliced fruit and chopped vegetables. It's amazing what she comes up with. Her enthusiasm and artistic flair has brightened our day on many occasions. She goes out of her way to add a special touch whenever she is working. Thank you, Carmela. Congratulations to Susan and Carmela. Now gonna ask Greg Haugen to come up, talk a little bit about the numbers in uh, our health district. As uh, you, many of you know, the numbers are rising and Greg's gonna talk a little bit about that. Greg? Thank, thank you, Sean. Sean mentioned the numbers are rising, and this chart shows how bad they really are rising. This, this chart shows for the last year what the 14-day uh, average has been of our new cases in our health district. <coughs> the health district consisting of uh, Appomattox County, Amherst County, Bedford County, and Campbell County, and of course Lynchburg City. We had an early peak in January of last year, up to our first major peak, rather, where we were up to 282 new cases per day. Then we dropped to a low of four, and we were thought we were home free for a while, but then they, with Delta coming through, they quickly jumped up to an even higher number, slightly up to 283 in October of uh, last year. Then they dropped again, and now they're rising even more swiftly, and we're at 356 the last time we, uh, we checked. <coughs> this is the same data, these are the same data, except it's only for three months, and it shows how the daily variation, uh, what the daily variation is, the blue vertical lines, and one of the reasons we're using a 14-day average. You can see that the numbers have increased uh, significantly. We're up at 356. As we said, a major increase in the last two weeks. Next slide, please. This slide is furnished by, uh, by DC, CDC. We're getting into our positivity data, the testing that's done to determine what the, uh, number, what the rate of uh, infection is in the uh, community. Unfortunately, as you can see in the little circle on the left, we're up at uh, a positivity rate of 49%, 50%. Half of the people, and this says half of the people that are being tested are testing positive. And this is really, really serious. And you can see on the other circle how the number has climbed real rapidly. Now going to the other side of the chart, other side of the, uh, next slide. Other, other side of the system is the vaccination progress. Uh, and our progress is, I guess the best way of saying it is, is it's been virtually zero since last, uh, last summer. <coughs> I thought this, when we put together this little thermometer, that the numbers each time we had a COVID would, would rapidly increase to, to, a, to something like 75%. But we've been staying close to this number for the last two or three months. We only get a, a few new vaccinations a day, and we're barely, barely increasing. In the total of Virginia, we have 68% that are uh, fully vaccinated with two doses. Out of those, adults are 78%. So it's not too bad for the state as a whole, but not good. <coughs> But one of the things that uh, is a little bit disturbing, 
We used to define the, f and, and on the chart, we're defining the fully vaccinated as two doses, and that's what we've been tracking. But now we're also tracking the booster, which is really what the new fully vaccinated numbers show, and they were only at 28, 20% or 21% of the <coughs> population in our district are, are fully, uh, are what you might say, really fully vaccinated at, at present. Thank you. Greg, thank you for sharing those uh, data points with us. And as I said earlier, obviously we have some challenges ahead of us. Um, really the rest of my report is COVID related, so not a lot of other things going on. We will start uh, Monday morning of next week some uh, more demolition on the fourth floor of the Riverside areas. But I um, want to kind of just step back and just uh, healthy reminders as we go through the next couple of weeks as these numbers continue to rise. Uh, as we announced Tuesday the 11th, we had another independent living resident uh, positive for COVID. Uh, that is our third person. Uh, staff member was also announced on Tuesday. And uh, as we are recording this, we already have another one on Wednesday morning who's positive. So uh, as you know, we've been reporting a lot of staff members who are positive. Um, we just are to a point where I think we need to Reminders need to make some slight changes to what we're doing. Um, you'll see some of our activities. I think Katrina has canceled one or two uh, visits out to different places, I think are meal related, uh, and we'll hold that for now and resume those maybe in a couple of weeks or a month if uh, numbers peak and get out of here and get better. But I um, would ask you to start social distancing again as we try to set up different areas. We will attempt to do so. Uh, to have safe distancing in group meetings when we can. Um, church, we want to continue to try to have church in the same format because uh, we know spiritual services are very important to many of you. And we would ask anyone who's coming into the church services with William or into other uh, ministers that may come in uh, to have masks on, everyone. Um, again, group meetings will space out where we can. Um, we continue uh, the environmental services group, the dining groups to uh, sanitize different areas, doorknobs, high touch point areas. Uh, we've been doing that for quite some time. We'll continue to do that. Um, so whether it's cleaning tables after someone has been uh, in an area for dinner or for lunch, we're doing that. Mailbox, elevator buttons, things like that. We continue to try to hit those points. Um, someone did point out a good note uh, for those of you that like taking stairwells. Uh, that we do not touch those areas. We just don't have capacity to get through and clean all the stairwells across all of our campuses. Uh, so if you're taking the stairs, uh, I think it's great, but just also make sure that you're cleaning your hands a little more after you're going through those areas. But again, washing hands, not touching our faces, wearing masks, social distancing, uh, just asking everyone to please be safe. One of the things we're also asking, if you are going over to visit a friend in healthcare or assisted living, to just make a visit to one person now. Please don't go up and see three or four people. Uh, just go see one person, keep your mask on. Once you cross that corridor into the mezzanine, please um, put your mask on and keep it on for the entire visit. Uh, while you're in someone's room in healthcare or assisted living, those masks need to stay on. So I appreciate you doing that. Um, effective on the 13th, starting in the morning, of January, um, we're going to ask everyone to start wearing masks again. And if you're vaccinated, unvaccinated, it doesn't matter at this point. Um, I'm asking for just, uh, let's plan on the next three weeks to put masks on all of us in common spaces. Uh, we'll reevaluate these numbers and see what they look like. But I think it's just come to the point in time that we need to look at doing that. So there'll be some other notices out in boxes as well here in the next day. Um, Greg's numbers speak for themselves. Uh, we just need to be cautious. We're seeing this obviously hit some of our residents, a lot of our staff. Um, we know that there's no space in the hospitals. If you're watching local news or reading newspapers, they're getting full. It's happening across the country. Um, we don't have our COVID unit in the same 
format that we used to before because of the construction. We do have spaces, um, but as we've seen, this th these numbers uh, jump quickly. Uh, fortunately for vaccinated people, you're not seeing the illness and the requirement of hospitalization. And fortunately, our three cases so far have not required anyone to be hospitalized or go into health care. We're trying to prevent that. Um, we also know that our challenges with staff right now uh, are an issue as they are across the country, having enough staff with people in and out because of exposures or infections. So um, we'll put masks on and keep them on for the next three weeks and evaluate. Um, reading University of Virginia's projections, they're saying potentially a spike around January 23rd. Um, but then they also say that you don't see um, that fall off. You see hospitalizations still keep up um, before all that starts falling. So hopefully we'll, we will get through this, but just some different changes in how we get around. Masks, you don't need them when you eat. Uh, if you are in the wellness center and working out, that will be optional at this point in time. Uh, I was just down for a workout class this morning talking with Denise and Kim, and they um, are a lot of folks in there are wearing masks again. So I know it can be difficult on a treadmill or some of the machines to have a mask on and try to do a cardio workout. We recognize that at this point. We'll say that is optional. If you're in your apartment with visitors, that is up to you whether you keep a mask on or not. But um, are asking again, uh, if you're not eating, working out, please keep a mask on in public areas across campus. Do not need a mask outside. Uh, I think the data has shown for the past two years, you're okay outside. But with the cold weather, it's probably uh, something that'll keep your face warm. If um, there are any questions, uh, please send them to me or to Angela Jones, and we'll try to issue kind of some uh, guidance, as I'm sure there will be questions back, uh, going back to all of us wearing masks again. But um, we want to just make sure that our goal is to not close down visitation, uh, try to keep things as normal, uh, quote unquote, as we can here over the next couple of weeks. And we think masks are the next step to mitigate those risks. So I thank you in advance for doing that. And um, we will try to have masks out in more areas uh, just to uh, help folks that may have gotten rid of theirs. And um, please mask, go over your nose, cover your mouth. I know some people sometimes forget or keep them down and around their, their chins, but please keep them over your nose and your mouth. And then uh, the last slide here, we talk about weather. We're watching the weather and there's some models this, uh, uh, this morning showing that there could be some heavy snow and we have a couple of days to figure that out, but obviously we'll be working with staff to prepare for this and uh, makes it a little more complicated. A lot of you have been very kind to house our staff as we go through storms sometimes. Uh, we don't want our staff in your homes right now and um, that maybe will be for next year when we have sleepovers again. And we always appreciate it. some neat stories where uh, you enjoy having them and they enjoy staying with you, but that's this is not the year to do that. So. I thank you again for all you continue to do to stay safe and uh, just remember all this different guidance. We'll have some uh, uh, paperwork coming out just with reminders for this and some guidance again. Thank you and have a good day.